You are watching Des Moines Menace Soccer on the Central Iowa Sports Network. The 2023 USL League 2 regular season finale has arrived. And tonight, a pair of Heartland Division foes go head-to-head -head as Peoria City squares off against the Des Moines Menace. And hello, everyone. Delighted to have you with us here on this Saturday evening from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. Alongside my broadcast partner, Justin Forster, I'm Hunter Phillips. And Justin... You can tell right there that there is a lot of energy, buzz surrounding this team right now. The Menace, of course, clinching the playoff spot with their win last week. Tonight they take on Peoria City, who is feeling really confident, even though they're not going to make the playoffs on a three-match win streak. Yeah, they, they want to keep that up. That's for sure, Hunter. And, uh, you know, the Menace conceded three goals last week. They won the game 5-3. Peoria won 6-1. So, the, it, you know, the, there's goals about these teams, but the Menace really need to tighten up at the back. Well, and they want to heat up at the right time as well. The first time these two teams met in Peoria, the Menace were able to get the clean sheet winning 2-0. We'll see how this one plays out here tonight under the lights in West Des Moines. We'll step aside and take a break. When we come back, we'll continue to get you ready for tonight's match here in West Des Moines on Central Iowa Sports Network. We all love a good win. However small or ordinary, losing track of time finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket, soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic, but it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now, Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Our July savings event is going on now at DeYarman Automotive, Knoxville. Save on new Chevy Silverado 1500 Turbo Max and GMC Sierra 1500s. Last call on new Ram 2500 Diesel, $18,000 off. And Ram 1500s, 15% off. Also, save on new Jeep Cherokee, Compass, and Gladiators. It's the July savings event at DeYarman Automotive, Knoxville. Chevy, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Family owned, family values. DeYarmanAuto.com. Menace and Peoria City getting ready for this regular season finale in USL League 2. You see the Red Army, they're already here to support the Menace and fans are continuing to file in for what will no doubt be an exciting match here to close out the regular season. Again, both teams coming off matches in which they scored a lot of goals beginning with Peoria City. Man, they scored six goals, a season high for them, and it was a number of players that were able to get involved against Springfield. And right in the 13th minute, Noah Madrigal, the magic man as they call him, able to net that one in the left corner. But then Peoria wasn't done yet as so they continue to work there to the box on the ball. Jonas Lashoy has been fantastic down the stretch for Peoria City to make it 2-0. Still later on in the first half, there's a penalty there in the box. That would hurt Springfield here and there to take it and knock it through is Christian Ortiz. And Justin, that was a commanding lead there at half for them. Yes, it was. They stamped to mark and they 
got another penalty just the other side of the half. And as you can see on the left-hand side of the penalty area, the player was brought down. And the Magic Man, Magical, steps up and places the ball past the goalkeeper to put Peoria up by four. Look at this pass here. What a fantastic ball played through for Sergeyev. And Sergeyev just places the ball past the goalkeeper. And then in the final minutes of the match, in the 90th minute, there was an own goal. Springfield nodding into their own net. And that was 6-1 to Peoria. Tim Rieken's team really feeling like they're playing with a lot of confidence here as you see more and more fans making their way in. That was their sixth win of the season, but the home fans had a lot to cheer for last week for the Des Moines Menace, a match in which, Justin, it was tied three different times. St. Charles really gave them a lot of fits, especially there in the first half. Yes, and as you can see, the Morgan with the assist here, and there was Captain Fantastic on the far post. Goldthorpe just slotting the ball home. And here off the corner, well-worked corner from the training field, nodded across the area, and McKenness just nodding in his own rebound to bring St. Charles back into the game. As you can see there, Gorshin trying to get a hand to it as the Menace were trying to clear it off the line through Adrian Gomeres. And then as you can see, a Goldthorpe just before the half, what a fantastic ball in and there was that man Fernando Garcia to play the ball into the back of the net great technique there look at this ball unbelievable just in behind the back for the defenders and then just the other side of half Fernando Garcia with his right foot what a fantastic strike just driving it past the goalkeeper's right hand side this to put the menace three two up on the night and here we go with the corner. And that man, Ziran Sul, coming in at the near post and nodding that ball with great power. And look at the acrobats on top of it. And then to put out the finishing touches, here were the menace to close things out. Nice piece of scoring as four different players were able to net a goal there in that 5-3 thrilling win to clinch it's spot into the playoffs for the Menace, winning 5-3 there in full time. So 11 combined scores, goals scored by both of these teams last week. No shortage of excitement here tonight at Valley Stadium. We'll take another break. When we come back, we'll continue to get you set for kickoff here in West Des Moines on CISN.TV. For 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. We all love a good win, however small or ordinary, losing track of time, finding yourself with a few extra dollars in your pocket soaking up the perfect Iowa day. These are the everyday delights and small victories that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the moments that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the corn they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans... Fourth all-time meeting between Peoria City and Des Moines Menace as both teams are out on the pitch. The starting 11's about to be announced. And looking at Peoria City, Justin, some different changes. We're going to see that for both of these teams here in this regular season finale. Most notably, Daniel Shannon 
Hasn't spent a whole lot of time in between the pipes here this season for Peoria City, but he'll be getting the start there at goal. Thomas Manoyer, another new face as well, but Christian Ortiz, when we talked to Dean Johnson yesterday, head coach uh, of the Menace, uh, someone that he's going to be coaching at Loyola Marymount later on this uh, season, uh, had a lot of great things to say about that young man. Yes, he did. He's going to be influential today. He plays uh, left back. He might play right back, but he's, he likes to get forward. He's very technical. He, he can tackle. He covers well, so he's, he's going to be an exciting player to watch. Also, Noah Madrigal coming off that two-goal performance against Springfield. And then also J.P. Pascarella playing at nearby Drake University. He gets the start in the starting 11 for Peoria City here tonight. On the flip side for the Des Moines Menace back here on their home pitch. And it will be Zarin Sewell that will get the captain's badge here tonight. But Dorchin back at goal looking to settle in a little bit after uh, again facing a really formidable team in St. Charles last week. Yeah, he pulled off some great saves, and surprisingly, the menace were under pressure right from the start because St. Charles came up here, and they weren't going to sit back. They just went at the menace, and Gorshin pulled off some great great saves, and he's in the starting lineup again this week. And then Lagos Kunga, exciting veteran player there. He's also in the starting 11 as well. Keep an eye on number 10. Yeah, Lagos Kunga back in the starting lineup. He's going to prove a point. He wants to play in the playoffs, and, you know, and that's because Elliot Goldthorpe is also unavailable. And Fernando Garcia, again, those two quick goals that really changed the complexion of that match last week. Neville Morgan, a lot of experience on the side of the Des Moines menace. Again, a very good crowd on hand here on this mid-July evening here. Could not ask for better conditions for football here in West Des Moines. We will go ahead and take one final break. When we come back, we'll have kickoff for you here in Des Moines on the Central Iowa Sports Network. We are, we are. We are so much more. Than an energy company. We are connectors. Community protectors. And clean energy leaders. We are. Job creators. Friends and neighbors. Stewards of your dollars and savings. Yes, we. We. We are so much more. We are the energy. Behind your everyday. And we are. Obsessively. Relentlessly. At your service. Almost ready for soccer here at Valley Stadium. Hunter Phillips and Justin Forster along with our Central Iowa Sports Network crew. Delighted to have you with us here for the regular season finale and really fitting, Justin, that it is Fan Appreciation Night. I'll tell you what, got here a couple hours before kickoff and the tailgate that was happening over there in the north end zone was full of people. So there's so much support of the Moines Society, of course, the Red Army, and uh, man, Almost 3,900 fans were here last week, and I'm telling you, the crowd here tonight is rivaling that. Well, I want to say I think it's it's fantastic that Des Moines Minnesota they put together this crowd appreciate tonight, and I think it, this day, and I think it's awesome. And there was over 300 people there, and the food was provided. And look at this here, I think we're going to break. I think we're going to break 4,000 today. 
And speaking of appreciation, how about that young man out there on the pitch, Cole Hansen, 17-year-old from Urbandale, Iowa, presenting the game ball. And, you know, earlier this year, seemingly healthy and physically an active teenager. However, uh, he was diagnosed with Burkitt lymphoma and really had to go through some treatments, but he has really bounced back and is hoping for remission. You talk about a fighter right there, that kid right there. Uh, my heart goes out to Carl Hansen. He, he, he's an absolute character, and I'm glad he's fought this battle. And we don't wish this on anyone, but he has come through. He's mentally strong, and I'm really proud of the kid. And so tonight, Cole will be spreading awareness to those here at the match. And again, some of the proceeds also went to kick cancer as well. So congratulations to Cole for coming out and being the presenter of the game ball all about community here in Des Moines. And so again, fourth all-time meeting between these two. Peoria City, a fairly new program coming in last year. And the Menace have had a pretty firm grip on this series, this young series so far, Justin. But again, if you're, what's the mindset going in if you're Peoria City and that you know you're not going to make the playoffs, but uh, this is your last hurrah, if you will, of the season. So uh, coming in with that, you know, nothing really to lose mentality. Yeah, nothing to lose. They, they, they haven't come here to lose. Put it that way. They, they've come here to prove a point. They want to win this game. They want to go home with three points. They're going to make it difficult for the Menace. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see how they come out in a 4-4-2, a 4-4-2, a 4-3-3. A it looks like they might start with a, a back four by the looks of it. That was something that we talked about uh, with Coach Johnson of the Menace on Friday is the fact that they will change things up and will try to really limit the verticality in which the Menace will try to pin their attacks here tonight. Peoria City 3-2 and two on the road. Meanwhile, the Menace 5-4-1 and excuse me, four and one here on their home pitch. And they will have the backing of thousands of Menace faithful here in West Des Moines. Will be the Menace in the black and red kits. And Peoria City in the white and red road kits. as we are off and running. Charging in is Miles Safanavong. Had an assist in the second goal of that dominant 6-1 victory against Springfield last week. Faced them twice, Peoria City did, and was able to take care of them with ease. Safanavong losing track of it. Will be a throw in for Peoria City. Savanavong started his collegiate career at SIUE and is now at Green Bay, a couple of Green Bay Phoenix on this Peoria City roster. And that was Jesse Williams in the starting 11 right there making that play. Jesse Williams with a fantastic sliding tackle there. Just managing to get the ball out for a corner, but set his stance, set his mark right from the start with a nice, solid tackle. Jonas Lee Shoy. And to send this corner, sweeping out towards a yard box. Now the Menace trying to get a clean possession, and they're on the ball. But a member of the Menace is down, and that will stop action here. It looks like it, it's Nev Morgan that's gone down. Just the start we expected here. And I, like I mentioned, Peoria, we're going to come out and put the pressure on. And that, with that great opportunity there for Wilson, but great tackle there from, just, uh, from Williams. Yeah, it was just a... Bang, bang, play there, battling for the ball. And you see the athletic training staff quick to tend to the member of the Menace. 
And so early on, you know, Justin, again, when you know that you're going to be in the playoffs, being healthy, obviously very critical. You want to have uh, as many complimented players as possible. So uh, hoping that he's all right. Yeah, I hope Big Nev's okay. He's up on his feet. Let me just confirm. Yeah, there was Nev Morgan going into his just holding his shoulder hopefully he's okay it's not a hen head injury as well hunter so he, he looks okay i think he'll be back on ready to go of course morgan common fixture with this menace team member of the jamaica u17 and u20 world cup qualifying teams so the menace will have to go to their bench here early Williams will push it back to Marvin Dorchin. Saron Sewell. Vicente Valor. Curious City, like saw in the first meeting between these two, they do like to press. Coming up to play that is Daniel Shannon again getting the start at goal for Peoria City here tonight. Yeah, they do like to press. Uh, and also, there'll be a time where they will sit in, they'll play very, very narrow and a very low block around about 30 yards out from their penalty area. And they'll look to counter. But that could be an opportunity for the menace actually to play the diagonal balls in, which they're really, really lethal at. And then they've got the width on the left and the right with Adrian Gumeres and uh, Nev Morgan. Tyler Moss there that received the back end of that contact as that was Jermaine Turner that sent that ball in as we get another closer look at it. That was Noah Madrigal there with the foul and that will be one of the one individual battles to watch tonight. Noah Madrigal, one of the top goal scorers for Peoria City and Tyler Moss, a player that's really come into his own there along that back line for the Menace. A little too far ahead of Miguel Cicadas. LaShoy. Playing that one up is Dorchin. So Peoria drop into a, a back three, so it looks like it, sh it's shaped up with... Safanovan is on the left, left hand side as a wing back. There's some rotations in there on the right hand side, wing back is Christian Ortiz. JP Cas uh, Pascarella sits in with Manoya at center back. And then they line up in a, a back five four and one up front. And it rotates with Madrigal and LeShoy. Those two really are the straw that stirs the drink for Peoria City, who takes it away from the menace. Both of these teams were in the Deep North Division last year, now back in the Heartland Division. All looking up at Chicago City. But the Menace. Really been playing well here down the stretch. Good ball from the end line. That was Luka Nedic. And now a sprint for it here in the near corner. It's collected by Fernando Garcia. It will remain with the Menace. Yeah, good little toe poke there from Thomas Manoya. Just did enough from Fernando Garcia. Throwing it in. It's Gamiero for the menace as they push it along the back and will reverse it to the far flank. Valor. Trying to create some spacing out of the menace. Now they're able to bring it through. Open look for Cicadas. Just off the back heel of Fernando Garcia, but you're starting to see that comfort factor 
here early on for the menace working right to left and then back into the center. Yeah, and Cicada's just finding a little bit of space in between the lines. What a great first touch he had there. He whipped the ball into Fernando Garcia. Garcia opened up to take the touch into the penalty area. It didn't quite work out, but, but you can see the level. I do like what, what I see in the midfield here with the menace with Valor and Neres just sitting. And then there's, there's the combination of and the rotations with Lagos Kunga and... Um, Cicada as well. So th there's always going to be a rotation. They're going to be difficult to pick up. Great tackle by Peoria City. That was Jermaine Turner. Short-lived possession for Peoria City. Cicadas. Oh, Kunga with excellent footwork. Kunga! Shot was deflected. That is just the kind of thrill he can bring. Potential crosser there from Gamiero, but picking it up is Shannon. But we told the audience at the top of the broadcast, Justin, that you got to keep an eye on number 10. And, man, he had his defender on, on ice there. Yeah, Legos Kunga, he's, he's, a, he's a technical player. As you could see there, just a little swift, swift movement of the hips, and he just goes on to his left foot. He was looking for a pass, actually, as you could see. It was indecisive, went for the shot. And then Gumeros on the right-hand side, but the keeper... Shannon managed, it was an easy save for him. Well accomplished player is Kunga. Of course, appeared in the US Open Cup with Atlanta United in 2017. And played for the US U20 national team at the 2017 FIFA Under 20 World Cup. And that valuable experience, especially with Atlanta United, uh, talk about for a lot of the younger players to be able to look to to a man like Lagos Kunga. Yeah, and he's actually a, a great story. He was born in Angola. And he left Angola at three. But he's, a, he's in between contracts right now. He, he can't really pick up a pro contract at this point because uh, I believe it's a FIFA, FIFA arbitration with the contract, his last contract he had in Lebanon. It's quite the story that I think we were talking about it yesterday at training. Just very well traveled but has found a nice home here in Des Moines with the Menace. Just getting underway here on this Saturday evening from Valley Stadium here mid-July. Again, the regular season started back on May 7th and already here we are in the heat of the summer, 80 degrees, the temperature mostly sunny skies. Not much of a breeze at all here tonight. Very still conditions, a little bit of haze. But all in all, the last two Saturdays could not ask for better conditions. And now here on the counter, Peoria City, LaShoy. Oh, but well recovered by Kunga. Morgan, Neville Morgan with the recovery. Unbelievable recovery there after the ball was knotted on. You can see the pace with Justin Wilson. So Justin Wilson and LaShoy and Madrigal, they're all rotating. There's either one up front, two underneath, but somebody is always in behind for that flick on, just something to watch out for. That was a fantastic recovery from Nev Morgan. He's playing wide on the left-hand side in the 3-5-2 shape, shape here. And this is something where at the, the back three, especially in transition, it, the risk safety factor here, Hunter is very, very important, committing too many players forward. And, and when it looks like the ball is going to be lost, you've got to recover. The nearest player, they've got to get back, and Nev Morgan did that. Just very textbook there from the wing back. Free kick here for Peoria City. Sent away by Manoyer. Rommel Israel in the starting 11 for the first time. Now quickly the menace come charging up the near flank. That one goes through the goalposts. But Fernando Garcia is not afraid to be able to take those chances. But the little technical combination with Valor and, and Miguel Cicadas earlier on, before the ball was played on, then the goalkeeper, Shannon, caught in no man's land. It was a gift. And I could see, it. yeah, as you can look again, Garcia, great run off the shoulder of the defender. Ball bobbled a bit. I could see what he was trying to do is chip it over. Shannon didn't quite work out. Shannon in no man's land. He is very lucky they're not 1-0 down. 
The regular keeper, Lucas Fontana, not at goal tonight. Shannon, six foot two inches from New York City and plays collegiately at Albany. It's already be being tested early. As you can see here, Peoria revert into a back three. Ortiz on the far side taking the throw. You'll see him going forward in the wide area as a wing back. Safana Vaughn on our near side wearing 23s on the left. You might get the ball here as he's going in. But that was Gamiero that read it very nicely. Just knowing that he had the closer proximity to the ball and back are the menace in Peoria City's half. City trying to clear it. And it will remain with the menace. And so Justin, you know, we talked about Peoria City and the fact that they know that they are ruled out of the playoffs, but they're going to give it their all. But for the menace, they already know that they have made it to the postseason. And so there is that weight that's lifted off their shoulders, but it's all about maintaining that confidence, that's what Coach Johnson and a couple of the players that we talked to said that we just need to keep it up. Yeah, they have to, and the players are playing for spots, yes. The weight has been lifted off the shoulders, and I think that takes a lot of pressure off everyone all the way through the coaching stuff. But you're here at home, you need to get a result. I think that's important for all the fans moving into the playoffs. This is what they've come to watch, entertaining soccer. And going into Peoria, you can see that they haven't come here to have a holiday. They've come here to play. You can see it. They've got great players. They're well coached. Yes. You can see that with the with the organization of the players and the rotation. Um, I watched the game online from last week and I was really impressed uh, with the way they played. Winning 6-1 against Springfield. Like you said, it's a, they've come off a three-win streak. So now they're into the fourth game. And it's, you know, it's not going to be an anticlimax. This is going to be an entertaining match here today. Well, there might be a little salty taste in the mouth of Peoria City because the last time they played here at Valley Stadium, that was the end of their season as they were eliminated out of the USL playoffs. So maybe a motivated bunch playing here in Iowa's capital city. Player for the Menace is down. That is Gamiero, I believe. Yeah, uh, late challenge in Gamiera. Garcia trying to make something of it and wins a corner. This will be the first corner on the night for the Menace. Gamiera, what a night he had last week at this time. Justin was the man of the match and a young, exciting player that plays at Campbell and has just gotten better throughout the course of the season. I've been really impressed with Gamiero. His work rate last week, and I, I'll go, I can always go back to the detail of players off the ball. We'll get to that in a minute. Here with the corner, curled in, header, and it just goes off to the left, but that was a beautiful ball here from that near corner for the menace. It's delivered by Vincente Valor. Yeah, Valor taking the the corner there and take it. corner duties as Goldthorpe is unavailable today and that was Fernando Garcia. Free header on the far post. Difficult one to head as he was going backwards and he had to deal with it as we see here. What a fantastic in swinger here. Valor with the left foot into the far post. Garcia just under a bit of pressure. Could have redirected that ball across the penalty area for somebody else maybe to nod and it would have created another opportunity. But we know what goal scorers are like. He scored two goals last weekend. He, he wants to keep that tally going. Oh, and how big was that goal, Justin? Right with about 30 seconds remaining there in extra time when the Menace were down 2-1. Talk about a momentum shifter going into the locker room as now the Menace looking to attack from the center. Good ball over to Garcia, but it gets picked away at the last moment. Unable to keep it in play, but they've been able to have that steady diet uh, of good movement there in the center, and they've really put Peoria City on their backs. Yeah, Cicada in that attacking, Miguel Cicada in that 10 position, the attacking midfield. His awareness is phenomenal. He knew that Gumeras 
was out here wide. He let the ball go. He carried, carried on his run. The skill from Lagos Kunga was phenomenal. Couple of step overs, played the ball through. Unfortunately, Fernando Garcia didn't quite get a hold of that. His first touch was off. Off the head of Valor. Savanavan. Trying to split it. Finds LaJoy. Oh, and they're going to get a foul on the menace just outside of the penalty area. But that was initially set up by Savanavong, who was able to split it nicely there to LaShoy as we get a better look at it from the field level. So as you look at this, there's Tyler Moss recovering. The three center backs are really, really tight. Nev Morgan had to recover quickly. If that ball was played through, I believe it was Wilson in that space in the penalty area on target. And here, it looks like it's going to be LaShoy taking the free, the free kick. LaShoy from Hillerod, Denmark. Be playing at Bryant this fall, but previously was at Monmouth. A wall built up by the menace. LaShoy, what a save! There at goal by Dorchin, diving to his left and denying Peoria City. Well, Dorchin, what a fantastic save to his left-hand side. He was blocked by the wall. LaShoy with his, with his right foot, just great technique and texture on that delivery, looking for the top corner, and Dorchin brought into action. Picking up where he left off last week with a couple of phenomenal saves. Dorchin from Nice, France. Wealth of professional experience, collegiately playing at UMass and Springfield College as the menace are on the move once more. On the ball. And then taken away quickly, but man, the counters have just been oh so quick from the Des Moines menace here to start this first half. And that was Thomas Manoya with a recovery run, slide tackle in the box. Le Legas Kunga has had a really good start. He he's good for a goal here. But what a break. Check at his pace. It's unbelievable. He's got a great burst of energy as we look at this corner coming in. Taking it will be Miguel Sagatis. The in swinger. That's oh, there was a push from Garcia into the back of Pascarella. So that waves off that corner kick attempt for the menace here as we are 20 minutes into this first half just getting underway for this regular season finale great challenge there from Jesse Williams just getting over Jermaine Turner winning that ball Pair of really nice plays from Williams, the native of Trinidad and Tobago. Played with Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC last season. Now here with it is Madrigal. Limited touches early. The top goal scorer for Peoria City. Nobody home for Peoria City. A throw in for the menace. Cadis draws the foul that was on Madrigal. Cicadas did really well there, drawing in the foul. Great technique. He had three players, three white jerseys around him. Hopefully he's okay. He's just come back from injury. He's had a good start so far, the first 21 minutes. So you see the captains there in Sewell. Have a conversation with the officials, standing up for one of his teammates there as Cicadis is able to get up on his own power. Member of the 2022 NCAA Division II National Championship team at Franklin Pierce University, way up in New Hampshire, now here with the menace this summer. Plenty of Division II, Division III, and even NAIA talent on both sides of the pitch here tonight. Looking to sharpen their skills here at the USL League Two level. Sewell playing up. Damiero. Garcia brings it across the half line. 
Paytas. Doesn't have any options. Only option really is back into Jesse Williams. He needed possibly Velour underneath him where he can see what's going on in behind Cicadas with the runs from Garcia and Gameras. Reverse it to Sewell. Off the hop, Gamiero will remain with the menace. Jermaine Turner, uh, maybe it was last off of the menace before going out of play. Great action here to start this first half. Menace probing from the far flank. Methodically waiting to approach. Cross to the center. Nev Morgan opted to go for the cutback, but Miguel Cicadas made a great run in behind the back line. Caught them all napping. It was off the shoulders, and, and that's where he's going to be really good. Someone to watch out for because he breaks. He finds those little ga gaps in the space and behind the center backs. He was onside. His arms were in the air. He was barking for that ball. And here we go with the menace with another corner, and all the big boys from the back are going up. Second time Kunga has been able to earn the team a corner kick. And it will be Vincente Valor. Valor from the corner. Still a chance here for the menace. But cleared away by Peoria City. Jesse Williams was just getting himself set into position to win that head and directed back to goal, but it was just at the last minute flicked on by one of the defenders in the penalty area. Quickly we'll go back to Peoria City. Steckley for Peoria City, just sitting in front of the back three as a pivot, looking to play out of the back. He's playing a very, very disciplined, disciplined role from what I could see, he's got Ortiz on the switch on the far side. Shannon denying the menace there. It's a little slow to get up was Garcia. Savanavan didn't quite get a hold of that, given the throw into the menace. Gamiero will push it back to Zeran Sewell. Once again, trying to work here on that far side are the menace. Nedic needs to get, he needs to recover quicker into that space. Valor was calling for him to do that on, roto on rotation. Gamiero in the middle of the box. And he'll watch this one go out. Keeping Curious City honest are the menace here early. Valor. Morgan had it briefly, and push it back to the back line. Nev Morgan is playing very, very inverted. Give and go with Lor. Gamiero splits past one, still keeps it alive. Cleared away by Wesley Gibson, just in the right place at the right time. As you can see, the white jersey's dropping deeper and deeper as this half goes on. Kunga. This would be the time for Nev Morgan and Gameres just to stay as wide as possible in the wide, wide areas, hog the touchline, try and draw defenders out of position to create the gaps, as you can see here. Gamiero has Garcia there if he could get it there, but just not quite the footing that Gamiero wanted there in that spot. Very unlike Gamero, normally he connects those. He just mishit it. He was Trying to play with urgency there, a little bit excited to get that ball into the penalty area. As this game goes on, you'll see the quality in Gamero with his deliveries. And look at Williams again on top of Turner winning that first ball. And this time the men has picked up the second ball. They have been challenging very nicely off of the goal kicks that have been delivered by Shannon, and they have played the majority 
of this first half in Peoria City's half. Valor surveying his options. Here's Morgan. Great ball, great technique on the receiving. Morgan trying to make a last second cutback, but it will win them another corner. Valor's ball played onto Mor Morgan's left foot, his back foot. Great touch as well going forward. Great defending for the corner. Cicadas. A lot of black shirts on top of the six yard box. Cicadas should have done better with that. Didn't beat the defender on the near post. And Steckley was right there. Didn't quite clear his lines. Luka Nedic throws it in for the menace. Keeping Shannon honest. That's Conga. But a trio of white shirts there to be able to create a little breathing room for Peoria City. Daniel Shannon just a little bit nervous. He looks nervous. He didn't get a hold of that, especially with Conga lurking right in behind him. And then the white jerseys just managing to get that ball out. They can't seem to clear their lines, Peoria. They're under pressure. They just deeper. They're Defending deep, the gaps are starting to appear between the lines. As you can see, they're into a back back five right now. And it's offside on Kunga. Just one of those chess matches that you often see, and quickly they have recognized, Justin, that they really need to have more enforcements there along the back because of what we have seen from the menace and how they have been able to counter and just how they have been able to build their offense. Yeah, and I, I think at times the menace need to be a little more patient in the build-up. At least Morgan and Gamera, they're playing in their wide positions in the wide area, hugging the touch line. But that's when the gaps are going to appear in between the lines in the half space area, central areas, half space on both sides. And, and this is where it's just, if it's not going to be on, don't go direct in. Play the ball back, recirculate the ball. Put your foot on the ball. Maybe one of their, two of their players will come out. Slow it down, slow it down, draw them out of position, and then maybe go. So just a, a little bit of patience. Nearly sent through there from the far corner for Peoria City. That was Madrigal. Lashoy. And the cover there from Gomeris, absolutely fantastic. Just heading the ball back into Dorshan. As Lashoy was right there, he's hungry. Lashoy's hungry for goals. He's a great goal scorer. He's got a few goals to his tally this season. He's shown that. Wilson, Lashoy, and Magigal, they've all shown us here right now in the start that they can be dangerous. And that would be the thing, the counter-attacking, quick turn and momentum. And it's just something to watch out for, especially in the midfield. Nedic or Valo, one of them, if one goes, the other one's got to sit in the space. They've got to have that cover. And at times, they've been caught too flat and higher up the pitch. So we do have, a, I believe, a hydration break that will be taking place here as we are at the 30-minute mark here in this first half. So that gives us an opportunity to just... Uh, Really talk about what we've seen here in the first 30 minutes. It's really been the menace that have had really firm control of the possession so far. And I tell you, I know we've spent a lot of time talking about him, but you see Adrian Gamiero right there to the left-hand part of your screen. He has just been everywhere, no matter if it's shifting over to the back line, but also going towards the front as well. He's just really comfortable uh, in what in his role with the team. It's just continued to grow confidence within himself. Yeah, Gamero, he's, he's up and down. He, like we just saw earlier on, he was back there defending, heading the ball into Dorsch, and the next minute he's in the penalty area delivering crosses. You know, the detail that goes into positional play and the work rate of some of the players, and the same on the far side there with Neville Morgan, doing the same job as well. Playing in a 3-5-2, it has its benefits in possession going forward. You get more numbers for it, but in transition, the back five on the line. So you've got three, especially if the opponents are attacking at pace. You've got to have players, for example, set in the midfield. Nedic or Valor? One of them. So Valor goes to support. Nedic has to come round. He's got to get round quicker. You think about the safety of positional play. If that ball's lost and it's tight, it's going straight down the middle and the counter-attack's on. 
So the movement of players has got to be a little more swifter, it's got to be quicker, it's got to be sharper. Well, moments ago, you caught a shot of the head coach for Peoria City, Tim Regan. You talk about someone who is passionate about the game there in the city of Peoria, of course, a Bradley University alum is the assistant coach for the men's soccer program. Drafted with the 17th overall pick in the 2003 MLS Super Draft by the Metro Stars. And I tell you, he is gradually building this program. They play at Shea Stadium there in Peoria, the home of Bradley men's soccer. And they're, they're going to be a team that, you know, a couple of years, Tom, a lot of talent there uh, in the Peoria region. Uh, 11 players on the roster, in fact, are from the state of Illinois, a lot from Peoria. So uh, this is a team that no doubt is on the rise. Yeah, you know, and Coach Regan's done a great job. And plus, he's also expanding his experience to these youngsters that, like you said, it's playing opportunities in the summer in Peoria. They're doing the right thing, developing the youngsters in the summer and, and giving them the opportunity. O obviously, they want to excel at the highest level. They want to get better. They want to have a chance at making the playoffs. I think eventually at some stage they will because they have some quality. As you can see this, between the lines, they were fantastic movement by Magical. But then well read by Nedich to just simply swipe it out of the control of Madrigal. It was one of those homegrown kids from Peoria playing soccer at Marquette in Milwaukee. It will be a corner for Peoria City. And going back to Coach Regan just one more time, Played in 81 career games in the MLS level. The Metro Stars, New York Red Bulls, Chivas USA, and Toronto FC. So he is someone that knows what it takes to reach that level. And just great that, again, he is able to teach the next generations the game and want to aspire to be professionals. So Fonavong. Hi, Archer. Headed away initially by the menace. Here is Jermaine Turner for Peoria City. Potential crosser there, but the height from Dorchin was key there in that element. Dorchin commanding his penalty area was well taken there. It was a good corner in, great delivery into the far post. With Turner nodding it across the penalty area. Menace not quite clear in the lines, and Turner picking it up, and Dorchin just showing his presence. Coming in for Ryan Troutman and Ken has been able to build confidence in his game. And someone that, as we touched on a little bit ago, has that professional experience, competed in their Serra division in Segunda in Spain earlier this year and also played professionally in Norway. Sarah and Sewell patiently Looking for Kunga, Savanavong. Nedic playing further up. Gamiero. Vincente Valor. Really trying to stretch out Peoria City are the menace. A little too wide for Cicadas. Here is Valor. Morgan. Back up. Trying to find someone in the center, but it's deflected off of Peoria City. Yeah, the Menace need more jerseys in the penalty area. There was only two there with Kunga and Garcia. There was five white jerseys around them. It had to be a special delivery. But again, you see the work rate from Velour just around the penalty area. Picking up a second piece after Tyler Moss's pass into Cicadas wasn't quite the right pass. Fifth corner kick for the Menace. Low line drive from Cicadas. And that was Steckley with the clearance, this time a lot better, clearing his lines. But those deliveries on the far side, the in-swingers from Valour, they've got to be better. They've got to beat the player on the near post to Steckley and maybe switch it up. Maybe it's in the plans for a runner on the near post, but you can see how it's all smothered in the penalty area. That was well played there by... Jesse Williams is reading it. 
shielding it and just going back and restarting. You see Zul, now Zul drops off a little bit. He put his foot on the ball earlier, but nobody showed. Somebody just has to show, play the ball back into him, draw a player out and then play him behind. Zirin Sul is having a better game today as the captain in a leadership role. And, and maybe this is the time for him to step up and show his experience. He did have a goal last week in that 5-3 victory against St. Charles, but again, maybe not the best effort defensively, but it's all about just trying to learn from it. No matter how many years you, you play, uh, always trying to get better. And certainly the combination of him, Jesse Williams, have done well in the back as well as Tyler Moss. Yeah, it, it happens at all levels as well. You know, uh, nobody has perfect games in that, but it's embrace the mistake, learn from it, correct it, and move on. You know, and I think that that's what it's all about. Now, obviously, with, you know, Nico Torres is out serving a second ban on his yellow card from the game against uh, City, Chicago City, and also... Suarez as well, who normally plays left center back, he's serving a second band. They'll be back next week, and I believe Jesse Williams is leaving. Uh, he's going to the USL League One with Diego. This might be his last game. Have a foul on the pitch that will go against the menace. But trying to keep that continuity here at the USL League Two level just really critical. Because like you noted, some players have the opportunity to be able to move up. But that opens up the door for others to put a stamp on their early professional career. Corner kick here for Peoria City. And that was just Justin Wilson just showing his determination to win that ball as Neditz was trying to shield it up for a goal kick. Just getting his leg rounded and kicking it against Neditz going out for a corner. Wilson, who you saw earlier from Williamsburg, Virginia. There, that midfield roll. Savanavong. Jesse Williams clearing his lines, but it was picked up on the edge of the area by get, get, um, get that one right, Jonas Steckley. Peoria City working to Turner here near corner. That was Jesse Williams wrapping that one up. Sewell. That's a late tackle on Sewell. Right through his ankle as he cleared the ball. That was Manoyer there that came in just a shade late. Went straight through Sewell as he cleared the ball. Signals go to the bench. Hopefully he's okay. As we look at this again, as the delivery comes in, Sewell, it, it, late tackle, car defense possibly. I mean, he came in really hard there, did Manoya. Referee doesn't think so and just gives a free kick. I don't know, that was a, could have been a card offense. Manoya better watch himself here yeah, because if he goes into another tackle, he, he could get a yellow card. Hopefully Zero and Sewell, the captain on the night, is okay. I wonder if that comes from just some inexperience uh, on his behalf there because we haven't really seen a lot of him here in this 2023 campaign, but it looks like Sewell is going to be helped up by the head athletic trainer for the menace. And Sewell will probably have to come off the field and then he'll get waved on as soon as Gorshin takes this. Nev Morgan on the far side just tucking into cover until Sewell comes back into the game as he shakes hands with some of the kids in the VIP section. Kunga quickly changing direction are the menace. Not enough black shirts there to collect that one within the 18-yard box. Sewell. Lashoy right there. Cicadas quick off the foot of Kunga. Kunga still staying with it. 
Good tackle there at a critical moment from Wesley Gibson in the penalty area. Gibson, the six foot one inch defender from Morton, Illinois. He's made a couple of those big time plays. Because Kunga just occupies so many personnel in those kind of moments. Lovely ball from Cicadas with Valour on the overlap. Here is Valour, just a tad late. And it was Jonah Steckley with the recovery there. He's doing really well, he's covering ground, but what a great tackle there. Just getting his body in between Valour and the ball. Steckley from Cambridge, England is the team captain tonight. For Peoria City, nil-nil. Here as we are approaching 43 minutes into this first half. Jesse Williams. Yeah, Valor, Vicente Valor in, in, screaming at Jesse Williams just to play the ball back into Zero and Sewell just so that they can draw players out. Sewell doing a little bit too much. He was lucky there because the touch from Madrigal didn't quite go his way. Going back to the pressing element is Peoria City. Valor. Shifted back by Morgan. Nice two-man game, and now working back to the middle are the Menace. Still staying with it is Garcia. Didn't quite beat the last defender there, but you can see the determination of the menace players. We've been a little bit too individual. Turner batted away, and it will roll just across the end line. What a powerful strike from Jermaine Turner, and that will be the fourth corner kick here coming up. Not going to play it short. LaShoy. Good pressure from Cicada. The line didn't come with him as the ball was played back. And look at this. Steckley getting the one-two because nobody pressed up from the midfield to pick up Steckley as Cicada's doing all the work. As the ball's played up, the line needs to step up as well through the back line, the midfield, closing the space. Oh, what a terrific ball ahead for Lagos Kunga. It's a one-on-two. Kunga got tripped up from behind, and that is going to be a foul on Peoria City. Peoria City players surrounding the referee there because they're not happy with it, but it looked like it was a tackle from behind from our angle up here in the booth. And it's a yellow card. It, and we talked about Manoya earlier. Yeah, as we look at this, Manoya coming in just to the left-hand side. He's trying to get the... Yeah, that's definitely a penalty. You can see it, Manoya taking... I believe it was Manoya uh, Pascarella that actually fouled Kunga, but that's... Oh, and another yellow card has been given out on Peoria City. So frustration starting to boil here for Peoria City, and here is Kunga to take the penalty kick. And blown dead for a brief moment. Kunga has four goals on the season. Looking to put the menace up first. Kunga doesn't get it past the keeper, but a rebound, and Valor puts it through on the back end, and the menace strike first here on their home pitch. Well, I'll tell you what, Kunga's taking a couple of deep breaths on that one. The rebound, what a great save there, going diving low to his right-hand side. Daniel Shannon getting his right arm to it, full stretch, but it was Valour first to the re rebound. As you look here, Kunga opens the hips up, not enough power on that. Pretty poor penalty, didn't hit the corner, but Valour in there with the rebound, putting the menace up. And we're just on half time. Referees out of time, but I'm sure Kunga Wanted that goal. 
But for Vincente Valor, the Spaniard from San Juan, his first goal of the season. And like we talked about, a member of that Franklin Pierce University 2022 NCAA Division II National Championship team, he will be going to Bryant following his head coach, Ruben Resendez. Just great recognition by Vincente Valor. And again, that's Justin Wilson on the far side there, winning the corner, and Nedic going in for the tackle. Uh, I believe it was Wesley Gibson that picked up the other yellow card for Peoria for descent. So that's what a great header there from Gamares. Fantastic powering header. But that's two yellows, Manoya and Wesley Gibson just just before just before half time. Turner couldn't get past Sewell who is a little gimpy. That's a good ball from Williams. I hope Sewell's all right, he's limping. Manoyer trying to make the defensive play. Kunga on the breakaway, ahead. Goes off of the keeper but still staying alive as that was Garcia. Well time run there from Garcia, moving into the space at the right moment. But I tell you what, Daniel Shannon came out big and strong. Boy, and that's saving tough. that. It was when yeah. Lagos Kunga and Fernando Garcia are both coming your direction. You know one thing, they have a goal in mind. Yeah, Lagos Kunga ran at the defender. Garcia just peeled off the left on the left hand side shoulder right hand sh side shoulder of the defender and then hit the space in behind. Damiro. High clear header from Peoria City as we are in extra time. Will be Peoria City ball. Cicada just pulling Turner back and then walking away from it. It's played at a a reasonable level in Spain as well. Miguel Cicada adds a lot of experience to this team. He's got great technique. The way he plays is very smart and how he finds space between the lines. So that will close out our first half here at Valley Stadium. An exhilarating opening 45 plus minutes of action here in West Des Moines has the home team, the Des Moines Menace, up 1-0 on Peoria City. We'll go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll recap the first half next here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. The Black Keys Dropout Boogie Tour. August 14th, 8 p.m., Iowa State Fair Grandstand in Des Moines. They want to get my on the ceiling. With special guest, the Velveteers, the Black Keys, live and loud. Reserve tickets on sale now through iowastatefair.org and at the Iowa State Fair ticket office. Convenience fees apply to all tickets. A family's powerful story of loss. My heart just sank. I just knew. Definitely the worst day of my life, too. Lexi was bringing a dog park to Creston before she was killed. And how one girl's passion helped others move forward. The family picked things up where Lexi left off. This is something Lexi really wanted to do. To be frank, she's getting it done now. Her story and her love for animals fueled this. It'll help her legacy live on forever. Local 5 News. Your stories, our community. We are Iowa. It's the DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Lease a new 2023 F-150 STX Super Cab 4x4 for $3.99 a month. That's right, $3.99 a month. With 10% down first payment and all fees due at signing. Save on new 2023 Ford Escape, Edge, and Expedition. Receive 2.9% APR for 60 months, plus no payments for 90 days. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com.
The Chicken in Orilla is a classic roadhouse joint serving chicken any way you want. All hand cut, hand breaded, and 100% satisfying. Chicken, mmm, mmm, just like your mama used to make. Bring the whole fam for all their favorites, and chicken so good you'll know why we could only call ourselves the chicken. In the middle of nowhere, but just minutes from everywhere. We have reached halftime here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. The Des Moines Menace up 1-0 against Peoria City after 45-plus minutes of action here under the lights here on this Saturday evening. Welcome back here to the broadcast booth, everyone here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Alongside Justin Vorster, I'm Hunter Phillips. And, Justin, boy, an exciting first half. We saw a lot of back-and-forth action. Really, the Menace controlled much of the tempo, much of the possession. And, boy, was the penalty kick the deflection off of the PK there for Vill Vicente Valor there late in the half. That was the difference to put the Menace up 1-0. Yeah, right on the 45th minute. This game could have gone either way. Some fantastic saves from both goalkeepers at critical moments. Gorshin pulled off some immaculate saves. The free kick of Lashoy to the left-hand side, his left-hand side. Fantastic save there. Kunga taking the penalty, and Volo was first to react. Wasn't really a good penalty, which we'll see in the highlights later. You know, Kunga didn't hit it with power, but, you know, Volo was first there, picking up his first goal of the season, and he's talk about it. Talk about backing up your teammate right there, no doubt about it. So good time for Volo to get his first goal of the season. So it is the menace again, up 1-0 here at halftime. We'll take... Our first break, when we come back, we'll have first half highlights for you here coming up next on the Central Iowa Sports Network. With over 260 beers on tap, El Bay Shop isn't just another craft beer bar. It's the best. Beer lovers know El Bay Shop, 200 Southwest 2nd, Des Moines. Missing a quality home-cooked meal? You know, the kind mom used to make. Lucky for you, we found her recipe book. Welcome to the highlight. Welcome to the Champagne of Bars. When I think about the Mini Pitch Initiative, I think about creating equal access to allow youth to have confidence in themselves to develop teamwork. You know, for me, sports were always a huge part of my life and I want other people to have that same experience that I did. When you revitalize space in the community, you are, you are able to allow people to come together. We've worked really hard with the U.S. Soccer Foundation over the past couple years in bringing pitches all over the country. We're really proud of being able to create spaces for kids to play and grow. At the end of the day, soccer is just a conduit it's allowing kids to develop and give them the tools that they need for life. That's what soccer means to me. It is Chuck for a buck time at halftime here at Valley Stadium. Again, great crowd on hand here for the regular season finale, and they've had a lot to cheer for for the home team. The Des Moines Menace up 1-0 against Peoria City, and a lot of great action we saw in both the attacking third and the sent away by Manoyer. Rommel Israel in the starting 11 for the first time. Now quickly through here. 
for Garcia. Look at Shannon caught in no man's land, but the defender, Wesley Gibson, did so well there just to cut off the angle, the acute angle, just making it really difficult for him. Barry C priming for position there off the corner kick. That was one of five corners for the menace there in the first half. Each team with five of those set pieces from the corner. Here's one of the dangerous players here for Peoria City and Jonas Lashoy. But what about this save here from Dorchin, who's playing with a lot of confidence? Dorchin with a fantastic save again. Look at this cross coming in. The end swinger, which just goes out of the camera there, was cleared away, but Turner picked up the pieces after it nodded it across. And there was Gorshin, Dorshin coming out to pick up. There you see the team captain, Steckley, on the counter for Peoria City. Really had a lot of quality chances, including that one right there. A powerful strike from Jermaine Turner, but that was denied by Dorchin. And here is where the first goal came from, Justin. Kunga didn't quite get a hold of this. Turner diving down to his right-hand side, but that man, Valoa, Vicente Valoa, to the rebound, putting the ball in the back of the net. As we look at this again here, Hunter, didn't quite get it, and you know Kunga wants this. That would have been his fifth goal of the season, but that's what you have your mates in the back for right there. Valor putting the finishing touches on the one goal that we saw there in the first half. The menace up 1-0 again here at the break. We'll step aside and take another timeout when we come back. We'll get you set for the second half here on a beautiful Saturday evening from West Des Moines on the Central Iowa Sports Network. The largest selection of German beer in the world, you'll find it at the Hessen House. From Doppelbox to Oktoberfest to Hefeweizens and Dunkels, there's no passport needed for the deliciously different beer and food at the Hessen House. So grab your friends and make it a fun night out. The Hessen House, 4th and Court, Des Moines. There's a new spin on casual dining near Drake University. Lucky Horse Beer and Burgers. Craveable faves, flatbreads, delicious burgers, frozen cocktails, and a crazy cool vibe. Get to Lucky Horse Beer and Burgers today. There's more Iowa in the Iowa Tap Room than you may realize. Housed in a building nearly as old as Iowa itself. The Iowa Tap Room greets you with a harvest of 120 Iowa craft beers on tap from all corners of the state. And the food doesn't get much more Iowa than this. The Iowa Tap Room, all Iowa beer, one amazing place. The Royal Mile, where everyone's a wee bit British. The Royal Mile is downtown Des Moines' living room with classic pub favourites. Pair them with a glass of whiskey or an expertly poured Guinness. It's bloody brilliant. The Royal Mile, a proper British pub. Not too many places hit all the right notes. But when it comes to great atmosphere and delicious scratch-made food, Truman's is the name to know. Game days are for Chiefs fans, but every day is for the food fans. Truman's get to know us by name. It takes a village to empower a young person to achieve their full potential. Yet today in America, one in three kids are growing up without a mentor. Together, we can change this. You can be that someone for a young person by becoming a mentor. Join the village, big brothers, big sisters. Become a big today. Closing in on the start of the second half here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. The Des Moines Menace up 1-0 against Peoria City. Two opponents, members of the Heartland Division. And speaking of the standings here in entering the regular season finale, of course, everyone is chasing Chicago City, the number one team in the latest USL2 power rankings. But Des Moines right there at 9-2. Peoria at 6-5. St. Charles and FC Wichita, who is play, playing uh, Chicago City tonight, hosting them. And uh, again, Chicago City played just the other night. 
Yeah, they, they were meant to play Wednesday night because of a storm that came through. It got cancelled to Thursday and they beat the Dutch Lions 2-0. And just the way they're doing things over there, they have no support, apparently from the ownership. It's the coaches that are keeping this team together. And look at their record. They could be 100% unbeaten coming out of this division. And they're just having fun. Yeah, they have had an incredible season. But the menace, and they already have their ticket punched uh, to the playoffs. And playing with uh, a little bit of freeness here tonight. And so now as we start to see some of the players come out here on the pitch to get ready for the second half, we got a steady dose of what we were going to see from both teams. And so kind of putting that, that coaching hat on for a second, Justin, you know, what, what do you think the adjustments are going to be made first with Peoria City here to start the second half? You know, it's not like they haven't been playing badly. I mean, they, they committed a foul, so they just they need to be a little more disciplined. You've got two players on yellow cards. You've got Gibson for descent, and you've got Manaya as well for descent with the tackle that was put on Congo. So you've got to watch out for those two now. They can't afford, Peoria can't afford to have a player sent off. However, you know, going forward, they, they do. They look critical. They look good in, in areas of the field. I mean, you've got LaShoy, Wilson... Madrigal, I mean, they're causing problems for the back three of Manus. And then out wide, you've got Safana Vaughn, and then you've got Christian Ortiz on the right, who's been really quiet, to be honest with you. The, the wing backs have been quiet in the attack, but where it's been dangerous is the three up front, how they're rotating, they're taking in the different roles of who's been the nine. But I've been impressed with uh, Steckley, who's playing in the holding midfield role. He's just doing his job covering space. It's just the little details that a lot of people don't see, and he's following his runners. And then how about for the menace? So obviously picking up that late goal to have some momentum going into the half. How do they build off of that here to start the second half? Well, I think if the menace carry on playing the way they're playing, just running at the back line of Peoria with Kunga. Kunga's been absolutely dangerous starting. He just needs to be a little more clinical in front of goal and he needs to shoot at the right time before he's being tackled. He's just waiting, waiting and hesitating, but he's, so he'll, he'll score a goal. He'll score a goal eventually. Morgan on the, on the our near side now on the left, bombing up and down the wide areas. And also on the far side, Gumeres, been unbelievable out there. And his defensive work has been, his recoveries have been absolutely fantastic. They, Nedic and Valor just need to keep it tight in the midfield. And then you've got Cicada that's just roaming in between the lines and just doing what he does best. He's very technical and he's got great distribution. Well, things have played out similar to what we saw from these two teams back on June 24th. It was a 1-0 lead for the Menace at half, and it was Lagos Kunga that got the goal in the 35th minute. And then Fernando Garcia adding another insurance goal for good measure in the 51st minute. And Justin, like we saw last week against St. Charles, we have seen the menace really come out aggressive and uh, really precise uh, with, with their attack to start the second half. And so I'm sure that's really a thing that Peoria City is saying, just you really have to know where your men are. Yeah, they'll come out the blocks firing up here. Yeah. And I think that's been a little bit different to last season even from the start of the match to the end of the match, the press has been phenomenal. They're going at the opponents here at home as well, in front of your home fans, which the attendances have shot up here in Des Moines at Valley Stadium. It's been absolutely fantastic. I expect an entertaining second half. There's going to be more goals in this. I always say that, but you can see it coming. I'll be surprised if it stays 1-0. Again, these two teams scored a combined 11 goals last in their last games. And so no doubt we will certainly see some fireworks before this one is all said and done. The Menace controlling the opening possession again, black and red kits here as Neville Morgan from the near side deflected off. And that is just the fast start that the Menace have been able to get to against Peoria City who is in their road white and red kits this is the sixth corner kick here on the night for the menace coming up yeah the menace have made one change from what i see netic has been taken off at half time in the holding midfield and i see it is we'll confirm that it's yep it's uh peter pearson has come into the midfield to go alongside vicente valor valor 
Oh, Jesse Williams, oh my word, that was blocked. What a block <laughs> yeah. that Jesse Williams with his right-footed oh. volley. Boy, just close there. Oh, yeah. what an unbelievable. Fernando Garcia. Garcia making some noise here to start the second half. A brilliant goal by one of the best that the menace has to offer. Let's have a look at this again as the ball gets played back after Jesse Williams' first initial shot was blocked. And there he is again with the acrobatics. Can you believe this? We do know that he scored on the opening game of last season against St. Croix with an absolutely fantastic bicycle kick. And here he is again, Fernando Garcia. Hey, Hunter, what a great goal. The showman, Fernando Garcia, goals in back-to-back -back matches, and that is highlight-worthy right there. The bicycle kick, the acrobatics. I have a feeling that we are going to be seeing that on highlight reels, maybe possibly Sports Center right there, because that was just a brilliant piece of athleticism from Fernando Garcia. So like we talked about, Justin, they put the pressure on early to start the second half. And again, they've just put Peoria City with their backs against the wall. And the menace were just too much here to start the second half. And now how does Peoria City respond now down two goals? I was just going to say, just like last weekend, Fernando Garcia has a habit of scoring just after halftime. However, we look at Peoria now who need to get back into this game, whether it be pushing players higher up the field in possession. The transitions must be a bit quicker. The goal Garcia scored came from nothing. It was an unbelievable acrobatic bicycle kick. Obviously the fans enjoyed it. But I think there's going to be a little more commitment now from the players, putting in a little more tackles, getting in the faces of the Menace players and, and trying to progress up the field. And maybe, you know, it's 2-0. One goal and it changes. So for the Menace, try and build quality off of that. Last goal by Fernando Garcia having a knack of getting it in the back of the nets, either late in the half or right at the beginning of the half. J.P. Pascarella here with it for Peoria City. Began his college career at Virginia Tech, now playing at nearby Drake University. So a little disappointed there as he couldn't keep that one in bounds. Saw coming across, just covering the ground there. He came hurtling across. He's, he's been a lot better today, even though it's a throw-in. Um, he covered the ground. He didn't let Wilson get ahead of him to try and get that ball. And Wilson has a bit of pace here. Look at Cicada just holding on to that as he goes down. But that is a foul. And it will be a yellow card. That's Ortiz picking up a yellow card, the third one. On the night, but look at look at Cicada there, how well he takes the ball. He just shrugs off the challenge coming in as we look at this. He's got great technique. He sees sees the challenge coming in. He gets his body across, steps across with his left foot, gets his elbows up, protects himself. He wins the free kick. Definition of drawing a foul right there from Miguel Cicadas and showing that leg strength right there of keeping his balance. Easier said than done as Valor. We'll push it ahead. Good ball from Garcia. There's Garcia once more off the pass, and that goes over the bar. Garcia with a combination there into Pearson, who just came on as a second-half subs substitute, replicating and uh, playing the ball back into Garcia, who strikes the ball over the crossbar. Playing with confidence now, as you can see, the Manasar. Morgan. Too much hand contact there as he was trying to gain separation for that through ball attempt from Sente Valor. But going back to Peter Pearson, Justin, Virginia Beach native, actually appeared in four match 14 matches for the Menace back in 2018. And you have somebody like that coming off the bench, uh, very good quality. Yeah, Pearson was called in last week. He came and started training. He's glad to be back. You know, he was talking to Chris Marshall, who's in who's the head of the Des Moines Society, he goes, I've come back to this organization. I'm playing for the badge, and I, 
I want to do it for the, for the city, the community, and I want to go on and win something. Saw an early touch from him, and here is Morgan. Trying to build within the box are the menace. Fedor trying to get a little crafty, but... Morgan, Morgan should have played Pearson a little bit earlier. He was screaming for the ball. He had six yards of space between him and the defender in the penalty area. And that allowed Steckley to be able to read that. Dorchin sends it across the midline. Dorchin with a pair of great saves in that first half. LaShoy. We've seen what he can do when he gets the ball. As you can see the rotations with LaShoy and Wilson, Madrigal, Madrigal and Turner on the far side, and you can see they stretch the width. Strong shot. That one is off from Peoria City. Looked like Manoyer was the one that took that. Typical defender strike, clear, more like a clearance. Manoya just striking the ball well over the crossbar, but I know just the movements with the front three of Peoria and, and there's the rotation. Stackley is the one that just sits in that space, but then there's the freedom with Turner, Wilson, Madrigal, Lashoy, and they just, they just rotating and rotating and but earlier on, they had the width. If they can maintain the width and hog the touch lines against the Menace, they might create an opening. Lucky to create. Menace once more, up two goals. Kunga looking for Pearson. Stays with the Menace here is Morgan. Cicadas off the side of the foot, just away from the outstretching. Neville Morgan there for the Des Moines menace. Ortiz just dropping a shoulder at the right moment on Nev Morgan there, just as Morgan was going in to try and get his delivery into the penalty area. Ortiz just did enough there. Cicadas, you can see how he plays. He's got these cheeky little fouls. He's just got to be careful. And he's going in the book now with that foul on Steckley. Correction on that one. Yeah, it was Steckley. That is against Gal Cesedes. First yellow card given to the Menace here tonight. Peoria City with three thus far. Pascarella off to the left. That was Manoyer. Turner. Sharp ball in, headed through, and Peoria City is Madrigal. able to. But I saw that coming, Hunter. There were two players on the far post against Tyler Moss. Madrigal was one of them, and Justin Wilson was the other one. It was either going to be Justin Wilson in front of Tyler Moss, or it was going to be Madrigal in behind, it was one of them. What a great execution, as you can see here. If you look at this again, delivery, great delivery, but there were two players in there. Justin Wilson went for the first one, and the delivery was pinpoint perfect. And I mentioned to you earlier on, as we see a substitution here, that now it's one goal, and it looks like Yama, Yamaz, Yamazuki, Yamazaki is coming in. And it looks like Cicadas. Well, and that changes the complexion here after early momentum in the start of the second half. And it is the Magic Man, Noah Madrigal, that is able to split the lead in half, but the Menace coming back. That just off to the right. Fernando Garcia with that strike, right footed just to the right hand side. I believe it was Garcia. Great decision to take Cicadas off on the yellow card because cards carry over, don't carry over to the playoffs. Yeah, that is really important to note that with the playoffs starting next week, that they do in fact 
not carry over. Sewell so boxing out, LaShoy. Did really well there, Sewell so just seeing the ball into his goalkeeper, Dorshin, as LaShoy was just lurking on his shoulder. It's a big frame to get round, that's for sure. Pearson for the menace. Trolls to the center and sends it back to Sewell. Menace led 1-0 at half, but both teams have netted a goal here in the early portion of the second half. Phenomenal ball for Morgan to play towards the center on the crosser. Just a quality vertical run. There's Saw Yamazaki giving some props to Morgan there on that delivery. And now that will give the menace a corner kick here. Great ball played in there for Morgan. In between the lines and off the left shoulder of Ortiz was a great delivery in, but Steckley coming across to play the ball out for a corner. Lador with a goal tonight. He will take it from the corner. That was off of Morgan. And just a little too much height there on that attempt. Great delivery there. Much better from Valor. Whip that ball in with pace and out swinger. Pascarella had no chance there for Justin Wilson. One goal in it now. Hunter, this is where the menace have got to be really disciplined at the back. What a great ball there from below, but the cover, look at that cover there. By uh, Pascarella. And a good job of holding Fernando Garcia. Here is Valor to Garcia. Above the box. Morgan. Floor. Nobody quite over to the left side of the six yard box for the menace. So Peoria City is able to clear it. That was Safanafin just covering on the far post, managing to get his header away. Uh, and this is where the menace need to be patient as well, just in possession. Try to draw players out. And we spoke about this in the first half as well. Don't rush it, don't commit too many players forward, get caught in the counter attack. And that's kind of what I'm talking about there. Sewell could have gone out wide as the ball goes out. You had Pearson, he's got the options. Miles Savanavong will throw it in for Peoria City on a three match win streak. Two of those wins coming against Springfield Athletic SC and then Chicago Dutch Lions FC. Not on the same page there from Pascarella for LaShoy. Yeah, LaShoy stayed on his line, but the angle that Pascarella was closed down by Nev Morgan was perfect because that he blocked off the passing lane, which forced him to play it out for a, a throw-in, which is good defending there, and good angle of approach from Morg. That ball a little too far ahead. Haven't quite seen the precision passing yet for Peoria City, but they have had moments where maybe they could build down to their attacking third as Sewell collects it here for the menace. Methodically waiting to play it ahead, and he does. Morgan trying to apply a little bit of pressure, but Peoria City draws a foul right there at the 40-yard line. I don't think that ball was on, to be honest with you, from sure. Direct. The options, this is where I'd like to see Volor or Pearson get on the ball more. Pearson's a 
a very technical player as well as a workhorse. He's strong in the tackle, but they've got players in the midfield that can di dictate the pace, and th these are the moments where you need to dictate the pace. Punching it out, Dorchin. Very good recognition by the keeper, Lashoy. Oh, I had a brief look there for Justin Wilson. But Dorchin wraps it up. Here's Peoria City has started to really regain things here and maybe find some sort of openings within the formation of the Menace. Well, they played so quick combinations there in our near side where LaShoy managed to get the ball. It was a slight deflection of Tyler Moss that went into Gorshin. But now this is where the focus needs to elevate. The men need to elevate a little more. You can see there's a lack in co uh, concentration with some of the players where they're giving the ball away and making silly mistakes. And, and I think this is when the changes will come in. And normally around half time in the 65th minute, I can see one player on the far side getting ready to come into the game. But this is where just the patience and the build up and how, we, how the menace draw players out. As you can see, there's five across the line. Now you draw a player out, keep the ball moving, one and two touch. I see Valuers, he does need someone to come into that half space there just to give support. And it's just a constant moving. There's too much standing on the line where players aren't coming into the space. Maybe bring a player with you. And th that's where Goldthorpe's really good. And they're missing him today because he comes in on the half turn and he creates from there. Valor to Morgan. Cutting back. And now up to the center of Allure, coming was, I believe that was Yamazaki that really had a, a clean look that just skirted over to the far post. Yeah, Yamazaki trying to get a hold of it. I'm just surprised that Nev Morgan didn't try and bend that in with his right foot. He's very left footed. He could have used his right foot there, used that moment there to get your hips around the ball. He looked to go across and below under pressure, the ball came out. Yamazaki just striking the ball past Daniel Shannon's left post. Adrian Gamiero exiting. Looks like Leroy Enzagusi is in for the menace, as is Curtis De Leon. Leroy and Zaguzi, local lad, Drake University. You've had your times with <laughs> That's right. Leroy's games in that. Very exciting player who didn't get much of an opportunity last week, but going back to 2021 was drafted in the MLS Super Draft by Nashville from Marion in Eastern Iowa. He was born in Nairobi, Kenya. Again, Curtis De Leon, another one of those substitutions in as well. De Leon from Raleigh, North Carolina. Has some good professional experience with North Carolina FC under his belt. That hit the side of the far post from Pearson. Pearson trying to play like, you know, just a little bit more on the ball there. Yeah, and the movement, um, I've seen that Yama, Yamazaki has now moved out to the right as Gomeris, who's worked really hard, has done his job, has gone off now. So Yamazaki has gone out to the right. Curtis Delion, who's more an attacking midfielder, plays in the midfield, is now into the midfield. Yamazaki is not really a 10, and he's preferred out wide. He's more comfortable out wide. Here is De Leon, far flank. Trying to reverse course are the menace, but a clean tackle made by Peoria City. Peoria City is still yet to make a change. We've got three subs currently warming up in the bottom corner. I think we might see the first change coming in. Do have five on their bench entering tonight's game. That is excluding 
the goalkeeper. LaShoy. Pascarella playing up. Christian Ortiz. Ortiz inverting. Technical player. I was wondering when he was going to play more in the midfield areas. I'd like to see him in there. Well read by the menace. De Leon will go back to Sewell. Create some opening. Far side for the menace. Leroy and Zagusi. Morgan kept it in play, but scooped up by the keeper, Daniel Shannon. And Zagusi's got to recover quickly there. That's offside and also would have been a foul. Ziran Sewell did really well to step in there as Madrigal was going in for the ball. But Nev, Nev Morgan darted down our near side on the left. Leroy and Zaguzzi had to play a better quality pass and they was just slightly going away from him. Or just, there's your, there's your de deviation. Just cut in onto your right foot and strike it. Do you see Manoyer exiting for Peoria City? Alex White is going to be coming in for Peoria City. And it looks like Alex White has gone into right back. Was it Ortiz that was taken off? He's or has he moved into a more central role? Like a more central role for Ortiz. I'm just trying to see. I'm look. Let me just confirm this because uh, Ortiz was playing in at right back. Well, right wing back. I just. First time tonight that Peoria City has been able to utilize their reserves. Valor. A pair of defenders around him. There is one of the subs right there, Alex White, number 14. De Leon. Fernando Garcia with a goal earlier here in the half. Garcia sticking with it. Oh, and just to the right of the near post. Curtis De Leon playing a lovely ball in there for Fernando Garcia. Weighing up his options as he cut into the penalty area, getting the ball onto his favorite. Right foot, as you can see here, number of creating that space for himself and the keeper, Shannon, was just blocked. Couldn't really see it, but just went past his near post. It's now in the Menace's half, Peoria City, just briefly. Sewell has done great on the back line for the Menace here tonight. Now pushing it back to Pascarella is Peoria City. Links up with Jermaine Turner, but Sewell once again knocks it free. And now Sewell will play it up for De Leon. Now here's Enzagusi with that terrific speed. How will he attack? Enzagusi. A little miscommunication there as he had. Fernando Garcia there just outside of that far post. Yeah, and Zaguzzi just showing his skill there with two or three step overs, swiveling of the hips, getting the ball on his right foot. He did the right thing by whipping that ball across. There was just no one on the end of it. We're looking at Sewell on the halfway line who's gone down injured. A terrific piece of defending earlier on there where Sewell won the ball. Did ever, ever, ever so well just to connect the pass he's he's played well so far in this in this match tonight i've, I've been a lot more impressed with zero and 
and he's leading the team as he's been given the responsibility of the captaincy tonight. We saw Pascarella be able to get up as is Aaron Sewell. Does take us into our hydration break here. And there's another look at the great crowd on hand here at Valley Stadium. Fan appreciation night once again, a huge success. And the game is just continuing to grow like you've seen, Justin. This team been founded in 1994, and uh, just each and every year the excitement for this club continues to grow. You know, Hunter, it's, uh, you know, I've been involved you when I was coaching the women's team back in 2012, 13, and, and working in the booth you know, alongside Dar Danielson back then. And the crowds and attendances have been unbelievable. The growth... And that just goes down to what the front officers are doing, Charlie Bells and Lyle and all the way through, you know, to Sydney Tatum and what, what their connection in the community. And I think that is so important. And it's the connection with all the youth clubs and getting all the, the players and the fans to come and watch what is the highest level of football here in Des Moines. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think you just hit on it perfectly, Justin. The fan experience all together. It's just a fun Saturday night to bring your family out to watch high-quality soccer. I mean, my goodness, you saw that goal by Fernando Garcia. I mean, that's normally stuff that you see in video games or, you know, if you're watching SportsCenter, you see that live in person. That is the excitement that the Menace have brought year in and year out, and the community has taken notice. Yeah, I, you know, the Menace, the players have been running camps and – you know, the players have been working them, so they, then there's this connection. You go, you know, and Zaguzzi has his own little techers business that he has, and all his kids that he's working with, they all come out and watch. They love it. He scores goals. He does his frontward, backward, somersault, whatever you want to call it, and they love it. They cheer, and it's, that's what it's about. And, and as you can see now, the camera's not on them, but the fans are now starting to get going with the Des Moines Society down there with the big drum trying to get the crowd cheering on the menace yeah trying to get an extra goal in this because we know that one goal just isn't enough sometimes the fans making this such a terrific atmosphere as LaShoy was the nearest member for Peoria City there in the vicinity but Marvin Dorchin is able to hit that one up and you know we went to the training session yesterday Justin and a few of, of the kids who were part of the camps came out and watched the guys train and they remember each of their coaches and that just again shows how special of a connection this team builds with all of the youngsters here in the area. Yeah and it's an effect that the players have had when they've been running these camps the effect they've had on these kids that have been participating for oh my word what a save there by Daniel, Shannon, and we're sparked into excitement here. Brought, of a, brought out of a conversation, Hunter, but what a <laughs> save there. Boy, Valor has had himself a fantastic night. Again, off the deflection from a penalty kick attempt from Lagos Kunga late in the first half. He was able to rebound and put it in the back of the nets. And that time, really putting Shannon on notice. Here is... The Menace have a corner. Whipped in very nicely. They're off the touch. Oh, it nearly went over the goal line. There's another opportunity there from the back by Valor. And breathing a little easier is Peoria City. And that was that was Neville Morgan with the strike. It rebounded off the, the defender on the looking at the goal, the right hand side, and comes across and cleared away by the other defender. Didn't go over the goal line. But that was Nev Morgan who put his hands on his head. He was like, I don't understand how that didn't go in. But again, another chance goes begging. And as, as this game goes on, you're just allowing Peoria back into the game because they're hungry. Lashoya, just watch him work in between the lines. Valeur, Valeur's got to come across. He's got to get Pearson closer to him just to cover that passing lane. Tended for Madrigal. But it was swept away by Des Moines. Sewell. Steckley again winning that ball in the midfield. Lashoy with a trio of menace defenders right around him. 
Saw in the beginning of the half with Shoy playing here along the near flank and now really more of that center position as Alex White will throw it in for Peoria City from Lake Bluff, Illinois. Knox College in his first year of collegiate soccer and will be playing at Calvin University, a Division III program. Quick foul here on Peoria City sets up a free kick for the menace. Sam Moore on the foul. And it looks like, I believe it's Turner. Turner's moved into the midfield. I'm just trying to confirm this. Ortiz has gone off. Alex White has come into his position at right back. Thomas Coughlin is also one of those substitutions in for Peoria City. Pearson Enzagusi. A good look for Enzagusi. But now looking to try to equalize things here as we're getting towards the latter stages of the second half are Peoria City. Working to the center line. A nab by the menace. There's Turner just sitting in, in, in front of his center backs there in a holding midfield. Just want to come. Actually, no, that is the substitute, Thomas Coughlin, who's coming for Sketley. Just holding in the midfield, doing what Sketley was doing. Morgan trying to avoid another corner. Peoria City. Just great effort there along the back by Alex White. Morgan trying to vie for position. Morgan trying to do some fancy tricks to get past the defender. Going out for a throw in though to Peoria. And this is, we're coming up to this stage, we're coming close to 20, 22 minutes. We're 22 minutes right now, and I mean, 12 minutes left of the game. Sorry, my apologies. I'm getting confused on time here as well. <laughs> but, you know, this is when fatigue builds into to players. This is where you've got to be mentally switched on it all the time. I talk about the high risk. It's, it, the game's about percentages, margins, and thrills. So thrills is the goals. And so this is where you've got to think about your jobs off the ball. Quick recoveries, cover the space, get organized. And I think it's so important as we see this ball coming in here, and that's a massive save there by. That almost spelled trouble for the menace there. LeShoy was able to connect with his teammate there in that near post, that being Daniel Sagayev, who did have a goal in the last match for Peoria City. Yeah, Hunter, like I said, it's just a lack of concentration. That ball should have been cut out earlier. Corner from Sanavong. Savanavong. Trying to play it for someone there along that far post area inside the six yard box, but a little too high and far for Peoria City. Knowing that this is their last match of the season, given that they're all here tonight. Goal kick here for Marvin Dorchen. Second consecutive match in between the pipes for the Des Moines Menace. So now it's all about just the quality possessions and taking care of the ball if you're the menace looking to protect home pitch. Dorchin. You know, as I, was, as I was talking about concentration, staying focused, that cross came in and 
Sergeyev was on the end of it, but Dorshin was right there at the right time to win that. It could have been 2-2. Could have easily been, had the ball been placed at just the right angle. Madrigal had the goal earlier here in the second half. To be able to shave the lead down to one, Lashoy is like a one-man wrecking crew sometimes, especially with a full head of speed. But the menace will now go back to their reserves once more here. Kenshiro Yamaguchi, one of them. And then Jesse Williams, who did get the start tonight, he is going to be entering the match. Coming off for the menace will be Vicente Valor. And then Neville Morgan, Neville Morgan. See, so leaving the pitch. So here is Yamaguchi. Got a glimpse of him last week. Connection with head coach Dean Johnson as he most recently played at Davis and Elkins College. Will play at IUPUI later on this fall. Hoping the fresh legs can be the difference here down the stretch for the menace. Yamazaki trying to win the 1v1 with Alex White. The two reserves there here in this near corner. White thought it was possibly off of Yamazaki. That will give a corner kick here for the Menace. This is their ninth of the night. It will be. De Leon. Contact there as the ball was sent. De Leon whipped that ball in waist height. Yamaguchi came flying in, forcing another corner. De Leon came in low here at the near bar. From the back, Tyler Moss. Menace trying to maintain the hold of this one here. Again, the fourth time that these two clubs have met, with the Menace winning the previous three. Off the throw in. Not forcing that pass, very wise to keep a hold of it, Sewell. To Yamazaki. Yamazaki finding space in the half space. De Leon cutting in. De Leon had a brief opening, Peter Pearson. The menace continuing to apply pressure here on Peoria City. And off of the menace there as it went across the end line. Yeah, you can see that. Choplin has come into the midfield for Valeur alongside Pearson to see the game out with five minutes to go. Yamazaki still on our near side in the wide area. And then Yamaguchi on the far side. So no doubt for Peoria City right now, it's just a moment of we need to do whatever it takes to put this back into the Menace's half. But of course the Menace take their time and hoping that on this set piece, give them a much needed insurance goal. It is De Leon from the far corner. High Archer. 
Garcia didn't quite get to that as it's played back in by Pearson. Sewell he had the header goal last week. And Shannon is able to come up with the ball. The recoveries have got to be quicker just to get into that space so the ball can't be played out of the midfield there. And you know the urgency is picking up for Peoria City. Leroy and Segusi on that vertical run, but Shannon is right there. Now one of the forwards has got to drop into that space there to take care of Thomas Coughlin. Coughlin he shouldn't be allowed to turn in that area and penetrate through the midfield against the Menace. It's got to be done off the ball. It's got to be sorted out. Enzagusi, 1v2. Enzagusi still with it. Enzagusi cutting back. Shot and... Oh! A little bit of Kenyan magic there from Enzagusi. Great technique, Hunter, on that. He had options inside him, inside the penalty area. He got the ball, and as you see the acrobatics, the backward forward, backward somersault. But the technique in that goal, how he got that ball onto his unfavored left foot from an acute angle, beating Shannon on his far post. Take a look at this again. He just cuts back with a lovely croif onto his left foot. Little deflection from Shannon onto the post and in. And that hopefully should secure it for the menace. They needed that goal. Fifth goal of the season for Enzagusi, who has proven throughout his time as a football player that he is electric. So Enzagusi pads the menace lead up to two. And that has to be such a big confidence booster for Enzagusi, who had been reeling a little bit here over the last few weeks. But a play like that can uh, can certainly dial things up here for the future. He's going to be a critical cog come playoff time. Yeah, and that's going to boost his com uh, confidence moving into the playoffs. You know, he, he's had a fantastic season this year, and I've had a conversation with him, and he's a lot more fitter this time round. And he says he's enjoying his game and he was out he was unavailable last saturday but he's back in the squad here and again doing what he does best when he gets when he comes off the bench he's like the super sub and he's scoring goals and if you look at his goals per minute and you break that down you'll be absolutely amazed yamazaki was nicked from behind and a yellow card administered to peoria city and that's uh, alex white yamazaki Showing a fantastic burst of speed. He gets away from his defenders. It, 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 he drops the shot. He stops, stops. He draws you in and then he goes and he's got you. So it's difficult to deal with. You know, and the menace have quality coming off the bench. And then there's the pace coming off the bench. And the opponents are just looking at them going, really, are you throwing this at us? But it's all part of the game. And, you know, Peoria have come here and they've definitely put up a fight. Uh, I've been impressed with a lot of the players and the way they play. They're well coached. They're a young team. There's a, a, a lot of energy about them and a lot of development over the years. And, you know, I said this a couple of times before, they're getting better and better every season. Well, and their attendance, home attendance, was up significantly this year. In fact, they had a record number of fans in their final home match of the year. That is going to be another Yellow card here, most likely. Against Peoria City, that is their sixth as a team tonight. But closing out the comments on Peoria City, they have the fan base there. Passionate soccer community in Peoria. And a certainly would be a fun team to watch. Fun club to watch in the near future. That's, a, that's a second yellow to my, um, that's a red card now. So that's... Uh, Manoya, remember he got a yellow card in the first half. He's just received a second yellow, so he's off with that. Sorry to interrupt you there. Oh, no, you're good, but he was thrust into the starting 11 for Peoria City and wonder if maybe that was an individual player that you wanted to key in on, on in the attacking third if you're the menace. 
now the set piece opportunity here for Jesse Williams and the Menace. That goes over. Did, Jesse didn't get enough bend and, and dip on that. He's got a good, he's got a lovely right foot. Didn't get enough texture on that delivery. So we are in extra time here in this second half. Menace led 1-0 at the break. Early goal by Fernando Garcia made it 2-0, but then Noah Madrigal off a beautiful assist from Jermaine Turner was able to make it a 2-1 contest, but then Leroy Enzagusi putting the final touches on what should be another Menace home victory here to close out the regular season. What a way to go into the regular, uh, closing the regular season and going into the playoffs with a win last weekend, two game winning streak here, and scoring another three goals and make that eight in two, in two weeks, but they just really need to touch up with defending at the back. That was a critical interception there from Sewell. Otherwise, on the far post, that player's coming in that could have been really dangerous, and then obviously Peoria back into the game. And that was LaShoy right there. Just that quick turn in motion by Sewell. He has been really sharp on the back line, and the Menace have needed it at multiple times just like that. Here tonight, he has been a difference maker. Total team effort by the Menace. Yeah, and again, LaShoy just lurking on the shoulders of the, of the center backs on, on Sewell. Sewell did really well there. Again, this is, these are moments now where the menace just need to keep the ball. They don't, really don't need to go hunting for goals. Just make Peoria chase because then they're on for the counter-attack and now it's four versus two. Jonas Lashoy. And there it is on the counter. Lashoy with a beautiful ball. And it leaked ahead to give Peoria City their second goal on the night. But I, I just spoke about that, didn't I? And, no, I was about and, to say. And it just opened. Why? Just keep the ball. Keep the ball. Now, Peoria are back in. They have another opportunity like, like this. Although now we're in the third minute of the injury time. But it, it's conceding goals like this. It, it's not good enough, especially now going into the playoffs. Hold on to that lead. That goal by Daniel Segev. Back-to-back -back matches with a goal, but now the men is trying to add one more for good measure. Yamazaki. I don't know why we didn't shoot there. It was on the right foot, and just going back to the player, but that, that was on, I think it was Enziguzi, trying to do a spin turn in the box, but But as the final whistle sounds in front of its home crowd on Fan Appreciation Night, the Des Moines Menace are victorious. Playoff bound, and will go in on a two-match win streak as they outlast Peoria City 3-2 in full time. A fantastic showing by the Menace, who had three different players net a goal tonight, two coming in the second half. A lot to recap after the Menace pick up their 10th victory on the season. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have a post-match recap coming up next here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Need orthopedic care today? DMOS Orthopedic Urgent Injury Clinics in Ankeny and West Des Moines are open six days a week. No appointment necessary. Our two convenient walk-in clinics offer you full access to dedicated orthopedic specialists. Wait times and costs are generally less than an ER visit. Check hours of operation and wait times instantly at DMOS.com. DMOS Urgent Injury Clinics in Ankeny and West Des Moines. Helping you get back to living.
this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. It's the DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Lease a new 2023 F-150 STX Super Cab 4x4 for $3.99 a month. That's right, $3.99 a month. With 10% down first payment and all fees due at signing. Save on new 2023 Ford Escape, Edge, and Expedition. Receive 2.9% APR for 60 months, plus no payments for 90 days. It's the Ford Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Well, on Fan Appreciation Night, these youngsters and all the fans had a lot to cheer for in the regular season finale. The Des Moines Menace claimed the victory over Peoria City 3-2, to two, the final score here in full time. Back here in the broadcast booth here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines, along with Justin Vorster, I'm Hunter Phillips. And Justin, man, what an exciting match here. You know, the first half, a lot of tactical back-and-forth play. The Menace led 1-0 at the break, but then we saw an early goal by the Menace, and you thought that maybe they were a little too comfortable there, 2-0. But then Peoria City, we knew that they were there in the second half, but in the end, the Menace in front of their home crowd was able to pick up the victory. Yeah, they did it. They pulled in the victory. As you can see, Kunga here with his penalty and Valor with the first goal and the rebound just on 45 minutes in the first half. Great execution. And then here we have a look at the, the, the Bormali in there. And then there's Garcia with the acrobatics. Remember the ESPN top 10 last year. And off he went. That was against St. Croix. But here he is with the acrobatics again. And then... Peoria were allowed back into the game. And what a great delivery here into the far post. And that ball was nodded in, bottom corner, past Dorshan. And that was Mad Madrigal. Leroy and Zaguzzi cut back on the Cruyff. Super sub, Leroy coming in. Onto his left foot, slight deflection from Shannon. Into the far corner, off the post. And he normally has a great celebration after that. And that goal was awfully important, his fifth of the season, to be able to cement the victory for the Menace, who, as we've talked about here, have punched their ticket to the playoffs. And, you know, Justin, there's one thing special about the playoffs now is that the Menace will be hosting the opponent to be determined. It will be announced by the league on Monday, but there's nothing better than hosting playoff soccer here in Iowa's capital city. It's fantastic, and this is what the city needs, the community, the, the menace do, and I've said this before, they do a fantastic job about organizing the structure. It's absolutely brilliant. The fan, fan base is growing. I'm excited. I can't wait for next weekend. Yeah, it's really going to be a lot of fun to watch. And, of course, we will have that coverage for you right here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. So keep your eye on the Des Moines Menaces social media platforms to keep an eye on who they will be hosting. It will be Friday at 7 o'clock. So make sure you either find your way here to Valley Stadium or make sure to tune in. So just in the regular season in the books, now we head to the playoffs. Final thoughts before we sign off here tonight. Yeah, I think the menace can do it if they just touch up in a few areas just off the ball. And I think that's the key. So what a night here at Valley Stadium to close out the regular season. 3-2, once again, the final score, the Des Moines Menace are able to outlast Peoria City. So on behalf of our entire crew, led by our producers, Sean and Grassi, and also a shout-out to Peter Tarpey with the Central Iowa Sports Network for my broadcast partner, Justin Vorster. I'm Hunter Phillips signing off from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines, and you've been watching Des Moines Menace Soccer on the Central Iowa Sports Network. <laughs>